let's try this out. It's been a while. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> as I was getting setting up for this video, my uh, enthusiasm for doing it was just waning quickly. Lots of stuff going on. My technology is not working, but whatever. Let's give this a try. So here's what I want to work on today. And it's been a long time since I've uploaded to the YouTube channel. For the two people that might care about that, really sorry. Uh, life's been busy, have a new baby, all, you know, lots going on. I haven't had much time to work on my own personal projects, but here's something that I just wanted to record just because um, I thought it would be fun. And it's something that I wanted to do for this Sony Discman right here. Uh, because I gotta say, one hobby that I have really gotten into, um, again, is listening to music. So, like, you know, when I'm at working or whatever, I like to have music going on in the background. I used to just put on, like, YouTube or something. And yeah, I know you can get music on YouTube. But I have a, you know, this is just kind of a sampling of, of CDs that I have, just that I've had sitting around here. Um, I have, I don't know, probably over 200 CDs, and I do enjoy listening to them. So I just got... <laughs> just a few and I still buy new ones like this act this is a this CD from red is from 2020 so I still buy physical media on CD but I like to listen to CDs when I work I know I could, again I know I could listen to it on my computer but it's just to me it's just more fun so I, I like to use this little fella here which I've had for a long time but um, what happened recently was the laser burned out on me uh, just I was sitting there listening to music and um, it just stopped working and what I started noticing was some CDs would work like like Lincoln Park Meteora actually works. It, it'll, it'll actually play for whatever reason. But then I'll, I'll put in like, you know, a Lincoln Park um, uh, Menace to Midnight and it won't work. And I'm I started messing around with the uh, the pot on the laser and I wasn't getting any success you know sometimes it would maybe work a little bit faster sometimes it might play menace at midnight and then once i stop it you know open up open up the disc tray and then play again it won't work um i can probably demonstrate that real quick because i don't think that i've messed up the laser too much uh, i think I, in my desperation i think i may have burned it up but let's take a look um I'm not sure if this camera, I have another camera set up over here, but I don't think any of them are going to pick up the LCD, but let's see. Um, if I hit play, yeah, you can see it on this one. This camera that I've had since college, because I don't invest in the YouTube channel, because I just don't. See how it says 13? And it's actually playing. You can see it's playing this CD. But then if I switch CDs, let me put in, I use Minutes to Midnight and Meteora as an example, so I might as well just continue on. It may surprise me and it may work. Let me put this in here. Okay, well, actually, it picked that up, too. Of course it's doing it on camera. Of course it's doing that. All right, well, I don't know what to say now it's working. I'll be damned. It must have known that I got a new laser, and um, it's terrified. Let's see if this works, then I'm just going to say fuck it. But replacing the laser anyway is not a terrible idea because the laser... In I think this model's from, like, 2000... Hey, look at that. It's actually playing. Well, it wasn't doing that before, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why it's deciding to uh, be nice when it's being watched. I guess it's kind of like the double slit experiment. When you're watching it, it behaves differently. But I'm going to try to attempt a laser replacement anyway. I mean, hell, worst thing that happens is this laser may just be fine. Maybe it just needed a couple of days of rest. I don't I don't know. But putting in a new laser is not going to hurt. If anything, it should just make it perform better. So let's do that. Um, I did buy what's supposed to be a new in stock laser. So let me, let me open this box up and let's see what we have inside here. Let's see here. And the goodie is what looks to be, hopefully, a brand new laser for this unit. And I was able to get the model number by disassembling the um, disc man and finding the laser model on it. And then I found somebody on, on eBay that was selling this, claiming to be new old stock, um, never been used. Now, one thing that I don't, yeah, here it is. One thing that I don't know is if the laser has, now that was very poorly packaged. It was probably just flopping around there. Hopefully it's not broken. So I don't see an anti-static solder point on it. Maybe that's it right there on the actual ribbon, but we'll, let's take the other laser out first and we'll compare and contrast. So I'm gonna take out the batteries. There we go. You're gonna need a little tiny, little baby screwdriver for some of these screws. So taking this apart is actually not that bad. You just got, you know, there's a screw here, which I'm gonna take out. Okay. 
that aside. There's a screw here, and I know that my light is being blocked, I'm sorry. Again, I don't really have very good equipment. Then I got one here. And then there should be one here and here. So I got the screws out. So I should just be able to, um, with some finagling, just kind of jiggle it and the top will come off. You have to be a little careful about the front. You don't want anything to break up there, but top does come off, you know, with a little bit of um, coercion. Uh, so here is the entire uh, CD unit. And then down here, there's just like a little ribbon cable. Uh, so in order to remove that, I'm going to push the handles forward like this. And then once I do that, the ribbon cable comes out and it's free there. Then there's a couple of, um, we got here, we got this blue one here, which I don't know if you can tell it's blue on the camera. Cause again, I shoot a camera and there's a white cable here, which, um, need to be removed so we can detach this from the main board. All right, so now uh, with unplugging that, the entire um, piece is out. And then, yeah, it looks like there is a point here, right here, that looks like it's been, you know, desoldered, I should say. And the laser that I just got has the same point here with a blob of solder on it. So I'm assuming that's the anti-static solder point that has to be removed. I'm gonna turn on my soldering iron uh, I'm gonna get a low temperature because we're gonna be on ribbon cable. Okay, so I'll just take the main board and the bottom piece out of the way for right now and just take a look at the laser assembly for this CD player. Um, as you can see, there's the model number on the bottom, uh, KSS331A. Uh, I haven't removed one, removed one of these before, but it looks fairly simple. There's a screw here. And then there's two screws down here. And what that should do, I'm just, I'm guessing, is this rail right here should come off, which should allow me to remove this whole piece. So let's see how that goes. Um, I did find online where instead of just buying the laser, you could buy the entire assembly, but I just didn't feel like that was necessary. So when I pull this off, there's like another piece of plastic that comes alongside with it. So we'll make sure that those get put back together. Let's see, this lifts up. So let me try to see what happens if I take this screw here out, that little white piece of plastic is coming up with it. Let me take this screw out and let's see. So I just pulled this white piece right here out. Again, sorry about the shitty equipment. And this screw I think is holding in, there's a little piece of plastic right there that it's holding in. So I'm just, I'm just not gonna mess with that. I'm guessing this should come up and it does. Okay, so at this point I have the rail taken out and then I have the laser. So let me take this little rail out and it goes back this way, so I'll put it there. And then here is the older laser. Now, like I said, it looks like there's a anti-static solder point here. So I'm going to, let's see, let me test. Well, let me just grab, here's the new one. And I'm going to grab a piece of wick. I should have some wick around here somewhere and remove that solder point. All right. I'm not the best soldering person on the planet. Okay, so if I take, if you look at these two lasers, there is this little plastic piece on the other one that I have to take off and stick on here, which will hold the rail in place. I'm not too happy with my desoldering job. I think I did a terrible, terrible job with that. I think I may have actually broke a trace. I don't know, we'll see. That would definitely be um, par for the course with me and soldering. Like I said, the other laser seems to be behaving for some reason, so I'm not gonna cry if this doesn't work. I mean, you won't even know because I'm not gonna release the video if this doesn't work. I'll be a little pissed that I'm out a few dollars on the laser. I uh, wish that the anti-static point was not on the ribbon because someone like me that's not very good at soldering and desoldering, that's just a, point of weakness there and these screws are tiny screws they're so little i would like to uh take an actual soldering course at some time i have decent equipment i just don't know what the fuck i'm doing all right so now let's get this rail in here all right there we go now we have some resistance and we'll get this side in first all right so i think i got it seated right Okay, so 
All right, there's some resistance there. Now there's like, remember this little piece of plastic went back here. So either I fucked up this trace or I didn't, I, I, I use my, um, I have my multimeter here to check for, to see if I broke that solder. So I don't, I don't think there is any connectivity there, but I also don't know if I had my soldering iron too hot or something and I cut through the ribbon, but I guess we're about to find out. Okay, so let me get the main board back out. So the, when you plug it back in, everything is color coded. So even though you might not be able to see on my shitty camera, it's actually pretty easy to get this back in here. It just tells you, all right, so the brown or burgundy, whatever goes in here. And the blue one goes where the blue goes, and the white goes where the white goes. All right, and then the fun part is getting this ribbon in here. So this comes out and then it flips up. So if I pull this out, get my little screwdriver and get it underneath, this flips up like that. So you wanna get that up, hold it, and then we'll slide the ribbon cable in there and then clamp it down trying to make it so you can see and I don't break anything at the same time. So we'll slide it face down, so we'll slide that in there. And then once it's in there, we clamp and then push it in. Okay, so that should hopefully be clamped in there. Now I just set my little rubber feet where the rubber feet things are. Okay, I suppose at this point, it's worth a test. So there's a little button right here that indicates whether the top is down or not. Um, so I can, you know, pretend like the top is on. But the first thing let me do is let me get these batteries in here. So first thing is we'll check to see if we blew anything up. All right, so if I push this and then I push what the, it thinks the play button is, you'll see the laser tries to focus. Try that again. You'll see a little spin there and the laser trying to focus. And then it says no disc. All right, so let me take my finger off and I'll just grab, uh, since corn is on top, put the corn CD in here. Hold down that little button there and then push what would be the play button over here. Um, all right, I did something wrong. With the disc in, it doesn't spin. Now that was the last thing I would expect to happen. All right, well, let's see. Let's see if we get something that I'm doing wrong here. Um, I mean, that is spinning. Is the disc being obstructed by something? Okay, I think those little cables on the bottom. Hey, look at that. And it looks like it's working. Holy shit. All right, yeah, these cables right here, they were touching the bottom of the disc. So the motor was spinning, but it wasn't um, wasn't actually working. So let me find, uh, I know that this red CD on the other laser, no matter what, it never read anything. Um, so let me try this one. And even though it worked before uh, we started here, I swear this one gave me nothing but trouble. And it comes right up within within a moment. Even the other laser uh, took a brief time before the disc actually came up. So let me just say this was actually um, you know a little nerve wracking with the uh, anti-static solder point. But you know once I got the laser in there, it seems like it's okay. Like I like I said, I used the multimeter to check to double check to make sure everything was okay. So let me put this thing back together. So that should just be as simple as well, make sure that the disc is in there fine okay you put the top on the front goes down then the sides in the back there we go snaps in there we go all right just a little bit of encouragement so the good news is i have a backup laser that seems like it's periodically working but if this new laser lasts you know i mean this this is a new breath of life into a device that's you know not not young this is a pretty old device uh, sometimes it's hard to believe that 2003 was uh, a long time ago. All right, 
we'll put this together and we'll call this project Downsgiving. Yeah, man, whenever you're, uh, you're replacing things like this, um, I understand and I sympathize. It can be, qu you can get quite nervous with these small components. And um, for me, one of the things that, cause I'm just, I just suck at soldering. I really want to get better at it, but I suck at it, is removing those anti-solder joints or points, whatever, blobs. And that's to protect the laser while it's in storage. You if you ever install a laser and it just doesn't work, before you declare the project a failure, check for a blob of solder on there somewhere. Uh, I actually did contact the seller of, of this laser and asked, hey, could you send me some information about the anti-static uh, blob? And then they never got back to me, so I just figured, fuck it, when it gets here, I'll figure it out. Okay, well, um, it seems like it's in good shape again. Do one more time with it back together, and we'll just call this a success. Assuming it actually works again. And it does. All right. Thanks uh, for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.